Now, the fight for control of minerals in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo exposes women to violence who are often raped as a form of war. There are efforts to stop the abuses. American native Lisa Shannon fund, founded Run for Congo Women and authored a book, A Thousand Sisters, My Journey into the Worst Place on Earth to Be a Woman. Shannon sat down with VOA's Carol Castiel recently and told her how a story on the Oprah Winfrey show turned her into an activist for Congo's women. I was just shocked that I had never even heard of it. Um, and at this point, it had been going on for eight years. This was 2005. And in particular, one woman's story really moved me. She was dragged to the forest by a militia, and she was begging for her life, and was basically told that if they killed her, no one would care. So I just wanted to find some simple way to let Congolese women know that they mattered to me. That simple way was founding Run for Congo Women. Yeah, that's Talk right. Talk about the that. The first year, it was me. <laughs> Run for Congo Women was me running alone, um, mostly because I was the only person I knew who knew anything about Congo um, and wanted to get involved. So I trained to do a 30-mile trail run with the idea of raising 30 sponsorships for women through Women for Women International. They run a sponsorship program where for $27 a month, a woman receives funds, she receives education, and you exchange letters with her. So at the end of my first run, actually, I had raised 80 sponsorships for women there, about $28,000. So I really felt emboldened. I felt like, you know, clearly when American women hear about what's happening, when people around the world hear about what's happening, they care and they want to get involved. And that's how it ended up blossoming into a global movement. But Lisa, raising money for these women and making these contributions is one thing. Other thing is deciding to pick up, leave your job, and go to Congo. What made you do that? I really grew to feel like these Congolese women are my family. And I wanted to meet them. I wanted to know how many of them were really directly affected by the war. Um, you know, and all those questions you have when you give back, is the money reaching them? You know, what is the program effective? What's the security situation like on the ground? And I think also, you know, in my own life, I had all the things that I think were supposed to make me happy, but I'm not sure that they were making me happy. And I felt like there was something about the connection I felt to Congolese women that was such a strong draw. Do you think the money is reaching the women and having a positive impact. The money, yes, definitely reaches the women. I mean, I saw they signed for it. Um, two staff members witness every month when they get the money. So that, for sure, was no problem. I was surprised to realize that in many ways, the money wasn't the most important part of sponsorship. That women carried around the letters that sponsors sent to them in pouches hung around their necks, right next to their hearts, like it was their most prized possession. And they instantly considered their sponsor among their best friends. Like, for instance, when I went, I've been three times now, I've now met five Congolese baby Lisas uh, that were named after me. Um, and that's not because of Run for Congo Women or because I've done, you know, sort of played a leadership role, but just because I wrote letters to their moms when they were pregnant. In your book, you, of course, talk about these many experiences visiting hospitals where women are trying to uh, recover from surgery, from the terrible violent rapes that they've experienced. But you also talk to some rebels, those who are perpetrating the violence. What do they say to you about what could persuade them to stop perpetrating this violence against women? Most militias will deny that they rape. Um, although the child soldiers that I talked to were happy to admit to it. What we know is that a lot of people are making a lot of money off of the conflict because Congo uh, is one of the wealthiest countries on the planet in terms of resources, mineral resources, resources that are used um, in our cell phones and computers. So everyone has a little chunk of Congo in their pocket. So there's sort of this scramble for who can be the most brutal so they can control the territory and control the resources. Whether or not they admit to it, it's clear that that's what's fueling the conflict. Now, for more information on any of today's stories, please visit us, visit us online at voaafrica.com.